Well, welcome back to today's uh, daily devotion. Thank you for uh, uh, tuning in. Again, uh, I want to remind you uh, to tune in on Sunday uh, for our, at 10 a.m. for our live stream worship service. Uh, I'm going to be talking with you about another storm. Uh, I talked last week about a storm. We called it the Purpose Driven Storm. Well, this Sunday you may call it the Purpose Driven Storm Part 2. And it also involves the disciples, just as last week's message did. But it's a completely different storm that they found themselves in. And there's a lot of uh, wonderful truth to help encourage us during times of uh, difficulty. And what is God doing in the storms and how can we get through the storms? By the way, I recently have authored a small booklet on um, uh, common questions and biblical uh, insight on the storms of life and trials and difficulties. And uh, we'll be making that available to you real uh, soon for free. Uh, another resource that I want to mention to you uh, today is uh, the, the recent series that I have been in uh, since uh, January, and it's proven to be a very timely series. It's entitled The Last Days. At the time uh, I began sharing this series, I had no idea that we would be encountering the kinds of things that we're encountering, uh, which are reflective, if nothing else, of how it will be in the last days. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, an album with 12 messages, the first 12 messages that I have delivered on this subject. Uh, in included in the album are outlines to go with each message. And so many people have asked, how can we get the series? This is volume one. There will be a volume two down the road, but this is volume one. And you can, uh, we can make this available to you uh, for a gift of $40. And uh, it has all 12 messages. We also can make this available uh, on DVD. If you'd rather have a DVD collection, it is a little more. But for a gift of $55, the same 12 messages on DVD with outlines. And I hope uh, if you're wanting that or wanting it for someone that you'll contact us here at the church. Uh, go on our website, uh, uh, send us an email, uh, call us on the telephone, 334 uh, 792 9406 uh, uh, and just let us know and they'll help you uh, uh, order uh, a set of volume one the last days and so we want to make that available to you we've had so many people asking about it today for our devotional uh, time I want to share a few words with you out of the book of Romans and I'm not going to read the entire passage to you but I'm going to read some uh, uh, significant verses out of the passage. It really begins in verse 13 of chapter 4 and goes through the end of the, the chapter. And it's about Abraham. Abraham is a model of faith for you and I. And uh, one of the things that uh, we recognize during uh, times of uncertainty is either how little faith we have or, or uh, how much faith we have or what level it's on. Abraham was a model of faith. He went through, by the way, storms himself. Uh, and he's called the father of the faithful because Abraham was willing to trust God beyond his understanding, uh, to trust God even beyond his sight. And so um, Paul writes about Abraham and, uh, and tells us exactly why Abraham is a model of faith. Listen in chapter 4. I pick up in verse 17. It says, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope, he believed against hope. That's Abraham, that he should become the father of many nations as he had been told. So shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith. Listen to this. When he considered his own body, which was as good as dead since he was a hundred years old. And when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, see, he still trusted God. No distrust, listen, made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what God had promised. And that is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. Abraham is such a picture of what it means to trust God. Of course, the miracle of the birth of Isaac was based on a promise and God and Abraham believed that that would happen in spite of the frailty uh, of his body at 100 years of age and Sarah at, at uh, 99. Uh, the, the biology just doesn't work, but the Word of God does. And Abraham believed that. Abraham's also a man who God told, I want you to go to another place 
but I'm not going to tell you where that place is. I just want you to trust me and strike out, and then I will show you when you get there. And he did. He packed everything up uh, along with uh, Sarah, and he headed off uh, to a land that was known to God but not known to him. Uh, he was a remarkable man of faith, and that's why he is a model for us, and that's why Paul uh, talks about him extensively here in this fourth chapter so that we can kind of understand what it means to be uh, men and women of great faith. And as a model, Abraham teaches us uh, how important it is to get into the presence of God. The, the fact is, faith, genuine faith, brings us into the presence of God. The Bible says that uh, Abraham was a friend of God, and he communicated with God like a friend. Faith, you see, is the key to fellowship. Uh, greater faith, the greater fellowship. And so Abraham is a model of a faith that would bring us into a greater kind of fellowship with God. A greater the, the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. Think about this. We walk by faith, not by sight. Um, and uh, without faith, we can't be saved. In, in fact, if you ever wonder how were the patriarchs and the, the saints of the Old Testament, how did they become saints? How did they become um, uh, a children of God, listen, the same way you and I do, by faith. It even says of Abraham here uh, that uh, in that last verse I shared with you, uh, that is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. It is impossible to please God without being uh, a people of faith. And it is that faith, that dependence upon God, that deepens our relationship and our fellowship it brings us into his presence. I'll tell you something else that Abraham is a model of faith for, and that is because he shows us that faith lets us also experience the power of God. In verse 17, again, he believed God could bring life uh, out of uh, death if necessary. When God told Abraham uh, to sacrifice Isaac, the, the son of the promise, uh, Abraham obeyed without, uh, without knowing exactly how God would provide but he did understand this, that if necessary, God would simply raise Isaac from the dead. Faith lets us experience the power of God. We're able to see the power of God by faith. We see that reflected in the New Testament on several occasions when uh, people got near Jesus or, or asked Jesus to perform a miracle and it was related to their faith. Be it so according to your faith, Jesus said on several occasions. A woman who had a blood issue touched the hem of his garment. You may recall that story. And Jesus said, who touched me? Listen, I felt power go out from me. Faith and the power of God are connected. Now, let me correct something that sometimes is misunderstood. Faith doesn't mean we command the power of God. Faith doesn't mean, say, I believe, therefore, God, you have to do something. Now, that's a very dangerous approach. But faith means that God will be able to express his power on our behalf with uh, accord to his will and his purpose for our life. By our faith, it is done. And so faith enables us to experience the power of God. Uh, Abraham also teaches us that faith helps us understand the proclamation of God. In verse 17, again, it says, He believed God who gives life to the dead and calls, listen to this, calls into existence uh, things that did not exist. That is by the word of God. It helps us understand what God says uh, God does. Uh, it, it enables us to understand the word of God clearly. It understands uh, or it helps us uh, see and understand the Word of God as it is played out in life for us. It helps us um, uh, discern the revelation of God based on His Word. It helps bring clarification to the Word of God. It helps us uh, activate uh, and make application of the Word of God. We believe it, so we hold on to it. I want to say to you today, if God has given you a promise, and that promise is from his word, hold on to it. As Habakkuk said, even though it late, the, the vision tarries, wait for it. Wait for the word that God has given you. Trust in that no matter what goes on around you. That is faith 
in action in regard to the promises or the word that he has given you. And so has he given you some promise out of his word? And by the way, you've got to stay in his word to get a word from his word. And if he's given you a word and it's from him, uh, then hold on to it um, because he's always good to his word. And then uh, Abraham teaches us that faith helps us uh, give praise to God. In verse 20, it said, No distrust made Abraham waver concerning the promise of God. See, that's the word he held on to. But he grew strong in his faith, and listen to this, and he gave glory to God. Faith enables us. It helps us give praise to God because our faith is not dependent on what we see. So we praise God for what he said. God has said something. I can trust what he said. I'm not going to waver like Abraham, see? He didn't waver in the promise. The promise seemed impossible. But all things are possible with God. And so he held on to the promise. He didn't waver, though probably if he had told the promise to people around him, I'm going to have a son. He's going to be the seed of a, uh, of a great nation and multitudes of people. If he had said that to others, they'd say, Abraham, you're 100. That's never going to happen. But he didn't waver, the Bible says. He held on to the word of God, the word, the promise of God given to him. And uh, he, didn't, he didn't wobble. He held to it, knowing and understanding that God would do exactly what he said. And because that of that, he was able to give glory to God. Before it ever happened, he's praising God. He's saying, thank you, God. I receive what you've said, and I will live uh, my life based on the word you've given and the promise you've entrusted to me. And in time, he saw the fruit of the word of God in Isaac, and he was able to glorify not only with, by faith, but by his sight, both of them together then. But there's one last thing I would tell you he teaches us about faith, and it is that faith enables us to hold on uh, until the promise happens. Uh, in verse 21, he says, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Faith holds on. Uh, it doesn't give up. It, it doesn't matter what the circumstances. Faith holds on. I want to encourage you today, if your faith has grown weary, it's okay if your faith has grown weary as long as you understand um, and trust God in fact, we can become like the individual that came to Jesus who Jesus said, hey, everything's possible if you believe. And he said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Maybe today you say, my faith is like that. It's wobbled. It's weak. I'm not like Abraham. Then here's a great prayer for you. Lord, I believe your word with my head. Help me to trust it now by faith with my heart. And so, Lord, like that man who came to you, I believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, help me grow strong. Return to his word. Return to the disciplines of prayer and talking with God and listening to him and uh, confess before him. Be clean. Stay clean before him and tell him, say, God, I'm going to listen to you when it's very clear and God, I'm going to listen to you when your voice seems vague. God will never abandon you. The scripture says that he will not forsake or abandon those who belong to him. So hold on by faith, even when your feelings tell you and are screaming just the opposite. By faith, stay connected and hold on to him. If you'll do that, uh, it will enable you to grow deeper in the difficulties of your life and to bring praise to God in the midst of all the circumstances of your life. I hope that's an encouragement and a help to you. I'm glad I've been able to share with you uh, this week. And uh, remember to tune in on Sunday at 10 a.m. for our live stream. Actually, 9.50, just a few minutes before the service, we'll have some updated information we'd love to share with you. Tune in then, and uh, I look forward to seeing you by live stream and uh, on our television broadcast this coming Sunday. Until then, God bless you.